Welcome to This Is My Architecture. Today we are in Zurich, Switzerland. And I'm joined by Alkis from Hexagon. Welcome, Alkis. Thank you very much, Christian. It's nice to be here. Alkis, tell us a little bit about Hexagon and the project you've been working on. Absolutely. Hexagon is a global leader in providing geospatial data solutions and services in a range of industries. Part of the company is focusing on building uh, lighter hardware solutions that can be either handheld devices or devices that can be mounted on a car or on a plane. Uh, these devices are primarily used by professionals, such as architects, city servers, or government agencies. Uh, our project, which is called Hexagon Digital Reality, is Hexagon's cloud-based data store that stores the data licensed by Hexagon or its partners. It also provides a platform on which uh, you can integrate with or push data from our hardware devices. Great, so that sounds very interesting. Let's dive into the architecture and, and explain what we are seeing here. Absolutely. On our left-hand side, we have our AWS data and streaming. And on our right-hand side, we have our AWS user experience and processing. Uh, both the logic of streaming data back to the user, uh, but also the user experience and the process assets uh, is hosted on EKS, as you can see. Uh, we went with the approach after migrating from COPS to EKS because we want to focus on the managed services and take into consideration and the benefits of uh, scalability, auto scaling and the self-healing mechanisms of EKS. Perfect. So you mentioned that you're generating a lot of data, high precision data from the devices um, itself. So I guess that's a lot of data you're dealing with. How do you handle that? So we created only one data account where we store all of our data on S3. And this becomes available uh, through our EKS uh, and through VPC peering with our multiple uh, EKS and AWS uh, accounts, uh, which is Dev, UA, QAT. Uh, and in that case, we actually make the data available both to our development and the users using the AWS's backbone network securely and privately. And I guess that's uh, where you profit from low latency and high bandwidth since you're using the AWS backbone and also avoid the duplication of these big data sets multiple times to the different environments you're running. You mentioned previously that customers have also the possibility to upload data from their devices and from other sources. Please walk me how, through how this works. Uh, that's correct. Both of these use cases uh, trigger the same processing pipeline. Mm -hmm. Either a user uh, drags and drops or direct on the device. Uh, what happens is our system provides a pre-signed URL back to the user. When that happens, the user actually uploads the item directly to S3. Uh, when that becomes available on S3, when the upload is finished, it sends an S3 event is triggered and sends a message into a queue on our SQS. Okay, so you're having a mechanism to upload the files to S3 and have that event sitting in SQS. So I guess there's some sort of microservice or service picking that up in order to be processed. Yes, we have a component running a container on EKS mm -hmm. and that is listening to that queue. So when the message becomes available there, then the logic of that uh, begins. Okay, so what happens next? I guess that's not the processing itself. So I guess you need them to process the data and store it somewhere again. Uh, the next steps is where I mentioned in the processing pipeline. So we have a uh, different output based on the uploaded file. Uh, and in that case, we need different CPU uh, or different memory. So we created a group of auto scaling groups uh, based on that logic. And uh, b within that, we're using uh, EC2 instances. Those EC2 instances are having templates that are uh, spinning up uh, specific containers with these instances that are pulling the images from ECR. So when the message, when the message becomes available and a component picks it up, it sends uh, the information back to those EC2 instances, again, using a messaging system. Uh, when that happens, uh, each specific EC2 instance uh, creates its own pipeline step to that processing pipeline. Mm -hmm. So I guess here you're profiting from the variety of different instance families and instance types because, like you mentioned, you have, depending on the output type, different recommendations or requirements um, regarding the CPU and the memory. So what happens next and where do you store the data and how do you make it available to the customer again? So when the process is finished, uh, the EC2 instances are sending back to the S3 mm -hmm. and that through the same becomes available back to the user and that processed item can either be placed on the map in our platform or be available for download. Okay, that's very interesting. So thanks for sharing this architecture with us today, Alkis. Thank you very much. It was really nice to be here. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.